We are a marketplace, we're not a retailer. So what that means is that we are connecting SMEs and brands and retailers directly with the consumer. And the importance of that is twofold. Number one, we don't compete with the brands or the SMEs or the retailers. And number two, we give all of those constituents data, their customer data, which they find very useful and very important in building their brand. Second thing is the scale of the business. Uh, you mentioned 600 million consumers or about 780 billion of sales. We deliver 70 million packages a day. We have more than 10 million SMEs on our platform and more than 200,000 brands on our platform. More than 10,000 brands from the US. So we're a massive platform and in our singles day, which some of you will have heard of, it's the event we hold on November 11th each year. Last year, so just a couple months ago, we sold $31 billion worth of product and delivered over a billion packages. So this is a very big platform. Third is the youth of our consumer base. Of those 600 million, uh, more than 80% of them are less than 35 years of age and 40% are less than 28 years of age. So this is a young group of consumers who do almost everything. More than 90% of what they do is on the mobile phone. And the last difference, which is really something I thought of when I was listening to Karen Patricia, was she talked about the moats that Amazon can build. We're, we're not building moats, we're building bridges. And our bridges are between our online business and the offline market in China. And we call that in retail, and we'll probably touch on that a little bit later, but these are the most important differences between us. We believe the future of retail is all retail, online and offline, and integrating them properly. Global import. China's the largest consumer market in the world, and the things that they want to buy, for the most part, are not produced in China. So we have tens of thousands of brands from all over the world, including many from the United States, who sell their products direct to consumers through our platform. We have seven or eight import platforms uh, that look after all different categories of products and all different ways of approaching those consumers. But there's huge demand in China for those products. Similarly, China is also the manufacturer to the world. And so both in B2C and in B2B businesses, there's a huge amount of volume of product that is leading China to more than 200 countries all over the world. And then thirdly, we've developed what we call local to local businesses. You will have seen um, both acquisitions and investments and joint ventures in places like Southeast Asia, South Asia, India, Russia, Turkey, many of the largest and most important emerging populations in the world because we have, as a core part of our globalization strategy, to have two billion consumers on our platform who are actively engaged on a day-to-day -day basis. So while many of those markets are in Asia, that's also Alibaba's backyard. So some may say, well, what about Europe? What about the United States? Those are the next stages of our evolving globalization, and we'll be talking about more about that in the future. Now, in order to build those businesses and make them work, you need enabling businesses in logistics, in payments, and in cloud services. So those complement the ecosystem that we call the Alibaba. Very young um, and grows quickly. The Chinese consumer is very curious, very interested in new products and new ideas, uh, creative things that are coming from other parts of the world. The Chinese consumer is getting more and more wealthy. There are 300 million today that are in the middle class in China, and there'll be another 300 million that emerge into the middle class over the next five years. So that consumer base, young, mobile, affluent, um, is also very curious and very story oriented. And so it isn't as simple as showing up in China with products and saying there are 600 million people on Alibaba's platform, surely somebody must be interested. They actually do quite a lot of work to understand what a brand or what an SME or what a retailer is selling, where the products come from, and why they'll fit their lifestyle today and in the future. So this is a market that requires patience. The numbers that I gave you a little bit earlier are very large, but building your brand 
and building your consumer base and building that consumer relationship in China takes time. If you're impatient, if you're in a hurry, if you view this as something that you're hoping will impact your quarterly results this year and maybe next year, China's not the market for you. If you see China as the long-term largest consumer globally in great consumer products, doesn't matter whether they're branded or small business or if you're a retailer, it's a great market for the future, but it will take time to go down. China's going too fast. China's going to go into a recession. And for 25 years, this country has managed to grow at levels between seven and a half and eight and a half percent. It's really quite extraordinary. Nothing like it in the history books and it's hard to see how any other country will be able to repeat that. Um, China has slowed down. As a $13 trillion economy, it would be quite unusual if you could continue to grow at seven or eight percent. And so it probably grows at about six and a half percent today, and maybe a little slower in 2019 because of uh, natural causes within the country, but also because of the current trade war. But if you think about where the country is going in the long term, well, I can't tell you what will happen in the next 12 to 18 months. I can tell you that 10 years from now, that economy will probably be the largest economy in the world. It, consumption as a percentage of total GDP will be the largest piece. Another three to 400 million people will have moved into the middle class. And it will not be a market that most small businesses, brands, and retailers can afford to ignore. So the future, I think, looks very good, notwithstanding some troubling headlines in English, um, is the example of new retail in the food category, fresh food and, and grocery category. Um, for those of you who haven't been to China ever or who haven't been to China recently, you should come to China and you should see what's going on. It's quite extraordinary uh, what's happening in innovation and technology in retail across all categories. For those of you that won't get there anytime soon, you will find our Huna booth actually here at the NRF in the, uh, in the Jaffa Center. So I would encourage you to visit and to have a first in this concept of omni-channel and other forms of online and offline integration. But the simplest way to think about it, and then you can go and see it uh, first person, is that it is the digitization of the entire retail value chain for the benefit of the merchant and for the consumer. The consumer piece is easy because consumers don't really care whether they're online or offline. They just want to shop when and where they want to shop. But the, for the merchant, it's much more complicated. For all the retailers and merchants out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's inventory and supply chain and logistics, and there's payments and delivery and fulfillment. And if that's taking place in many different parts of your organization or away from your organization, the integration of online and offline becomes very, very complicated. So what we've done is we've created a technology platform that allows you to digitize everything you're doing online and everything that you're doing offline. Integrate them, provide merchants with all of that data so that they can optimize the supply chain, so that they can think about how to make the delivery, fulfillment and delivery more efficient and more productive, and ultimately to increase the bottom line profits margin. So this is technology that we're not dreaming about this. This is technology that we're implementing, that works, um, and we plan to bring it to other parts of the world. So we're looking forward to that. In the meantime, please come to China. We'll look after you. We'll show you many interesting innovations in the region. <laughs>